We're gonna start out on our backs today, guys. Okay. Once you get there, listen to your back. Mine's been a little cranky lately, so um, you know, just rock it out a little. Remember, knees in closer to your chest does more than mid back and um, to low back, and then knees further away does more the low back to the hips. So recognize, you know, just kind of tune in and notice what just begins to ease some tension away. Right. Yes, and if you draw circles, make sure you pause and go in the opposite direction. We have a tendency to always lead with our dominant side. All right, so from here, if you have your block, you can place it between your shoulder blades or your hips, or you can take a nice blanket and place it between the shoulder blades and under the hips. So remember, if you're feeling too much of an arch in your neck, place another blanket or towel up under your neck. You're welcome to get up and run and get anything that you need to anytime. It might be too much on your lower back to lengthen your legs, but you can play with that or bend the knees, let the knees touch or feet touch, knees wide. Once you get there, have a nice inhale, exhale, maybe out through your mouth and try to close your eyes if you can, just to allow the visual busyness to melt away, all those visual distractions. Let's begin to awaken our breathing, deeply breathing in and out through our noses, constricting the backs of our throats. Nice. So maybe this is the first time you've really stopped today and watched more than two breaths. So give yourself some time to truly feel the energy here calming presence your breathing can bring. Centering. Bringing us to a place where we're just going to be focused and not worried about anything else other than trying not to fall over today. Maybe you can begin to feel your shoulders soften a little more towards the earth. Finding a sense of grounding. Get expansion. Let's inhale, take our arms wide. Exhale, hands to heart center. Take this moment to set our intention. And once we do, we'll just slowly remove our prop. We'll stay on our back, maybe hug the knees in again, look opposite the knees if you take them side to side. Yes. All right. And so from here, we'll place our feet on the floor. Up hip width apart, maybe rock your arms a little into the rib cage. Press to the heels, inhale, lift the hips up, squeeze those inner thighs, exhale, lift the heels as you roll the spine back down. Press to the heels as you lift up, lift the heels, exhale, round it down. Let's take our arms up this time as well. Inhale, hips, arms past the ears, really reach. Exhale, take everything back down where you started. Make sure the heels are lifted, that when you come down, that will help you get that nice rounding on the spine. One more round of this, just sinking it up with our breath. All right, this time when our hips come down, maybe wiggle those arms into the rib cage again. Inhale, lift the hips up, lift your right knee, extend the leg, bend the knee again, and release it to the floor. Feel the squeeze of the inner thighs. Lift the left knee, extend the leg, bend the knee, heel down, lift the hips. Right leg again. So we've got three movements once we lift it. All right, left leg, knee up, extend, bend the knee again, foot down. Feel the lift of the hips. Once you pause through the center, 
Nice. Knee up. Extend. Bend. Go down. One more round each side. Right leg. Extend. Bend. And down. Ooh. Nice. Beginning to feel it a bit. Creating some heat. Lift the heels when you're done. Slowly round it down. Maybe draw the knees in again. Rock it side to side. Nice. All right, we're gonna work our way to standing. So as few or as many as you'd like, some egg roll, rock and rolls. This in my back's a little cranky, but we're working to be able to come standing without using our hands over time. Okay, guys. Woo, almost. <laughs> almost, there we go. All right, nice. So standing, here we are. Nice. I'll back up a little and let's inhale our arms to sky. Press through those feet, bend the knees as we exhale, fold, forward fold. Take a moment here, check in. Maybe bend the knees and straighten, switch side to side. Give yourself a few breaths here to just check in, feel what the legs are talking about. Mm -hmm. Yes, the back, shoulders. We know where you might be tight, so bend the knees a little extra to see if that helps. All right. All right, so we're going to pause here. If you have a hard time reaching the floor, go ahead and get a block or something or a book under your hands. Let's inhale to flat back. Really pull the hip creases back. Left hand, spider fingers forward, and exhale, right arm to the sky. You can bend your left knee as you like. You can look down to the side or up. But wherever you are, pull that left hip crease back. Feel the left rib cage feel open. Any kind of movement through the right arm that seems intuitive, feel the spine telescope. And on an exhale, fold. Maybe bend the knees a little extra just to get some nice release through the back, the hips. Then we'll inhale to flat back again. Right hand a little forward and exhale, left hand sky. Bending right knee if you need to, but pull that right hip crease back. Try not to look back at your body. Feel that extension and telescoping through the throat and the neck. Holding here, that belly is strong. Nice, and we'll exhale, fold, forward, fold. Inhale, look forward to find space. And exhale, fold, hands to the floor. Let's step back to plank. Taking a moment here, feeling that belly draw through the spine, lengthening tailbone through heels. So you want to feel the back of your legs really working here. When you're ready, moving through your vinyasa, exhaling down, maybe extra chaturanga dandasana. Nice. Exhale, down dog. Pedaling it out, the down dog, as we address other areas of the body now. Recognize if you're clenching your jaw. All right, just begin to feel the jaw relax, the head surrender to gravity. Maybe feel some tension melt from the neck. All right, so we're gonna lift our heels high, tuck our chin, try to bring our chest in deeper, but hug your arms towards your ears and breathe. And on an inhale, we're gonna slowly wave it out to plank. Untucking the chin at the last, lengthening through the throat, the tailbone, the heels. Exhale, slowly round it back up. Inhale, wave forward. No hurry, how slow can you uncurl it? Exhale, curl it back up as deeply as you can. Tuck that chin. Good for the thyroid here. Inhale, lengthening through. Feel the back of the neck strong. One more round, just creating some heat here. Nice. Okay. So bottom of our next exhale, walk, step, or float, feet between hands. Inhale, look forward, find space along the spine, flat back. And exhale, feel the wave into your fold. How slowly can you feel it wave? It feels so good. Let your arms hang to gravity a moment. Let the shoulders soften at the base of the neck. Feel the weight of the head. 
Inhale, look forward and find space again. Flat back. And exhale, fold. Inhale, reverse it on up. Maybe a little back bend if that would feel good now. Exhale, fold. Sun salutation A, meeting in, down dog. Inhale, look forward and find space. And exhale, fold as you step or float, going through your vinyasa, meeting in, down dog. Nice. So let's inhale, right leg to sky. Press away from the earth, feel everything hugging to the middle of the midline. Exhale, slowly knee to nose, lift your back heel high, tuck your chin, maybe touch knee to nose, hold it there, and then we'll inhale it back up. Exhale, knee to nose, no hurry. Look forward, set your foot inside your hand as controlled as you can. Nice. Left hand down, exhale, right arm to sky. Lengthen that back heel away from you, feel the Press away from the earth and feel your heart lift and rotate. Feel the neck long. Recognize if you're tucking your chin. Mm -hmm. And we'll release it down. Let's find a bit of flat back, maybe a playful hinge. And we'll inhale up. Press and lunge. Feel those shoulders soften from the ears. All right, so from here, we're going to work our way to warrior three and then to our tree. So it's early on, maybe hands can help to hips here, keep that core engaged. Or if you want, just shift forward, pause, lift through that back leg, press through your grounded foot. You can always fly the arms or reach them on forward. Any variation, any playfulness, hands to heart. We're gonna hinge at that right hip as we stand up, all right? We're gonna lift that knee high, maybe hands to hips here. Flex the foot. And just first, let's take the knee out to the side and back to center. Out to the side and back to center. It doesn't have to open all the way up. We're just checking in to see where that hip wants to open up to today. You can always keep the toes to the floor or to the calf or use your hand and help lift to that inner thigh. Maybe hands to hips or hands to heart. Breathing, feel the presence of your shoulders pressing back and your spine telescoping to the crown of the head. Can you imagine that you can lift your head any higher as if my hand were hovering over your head and you could press into it? All right, we're taking it back through warrior three, maybe hands to heart. Press them, that'll help activate. Toes are open. Then we'll take it to crescent lunge, no hurry. Slow is good. Inhale up. Exhale, reach, take it down. Take your time if you're still moving. Vinyasa, meeting in, down dog. Nice, take a moment, maybe drop the knee and a hip in here. Let it feel really good. And then exhale, maybe sigh it out your mouth. All right, inhale, left leg to sky. Control it, try not to bend those elbows. Exhale, smoothly knee to nose, tuck the chin. Inhale it up again. Knee to nose, pause, then look forward. Control, set that foot inside your hand. Right hand down, and with an exhale, left arm to sky. Hand is active, you're pressing away, you're reaching hand to hand. Feel that extension across the chest as you reach hand to hand. Lengthen through that back heel, bend the front knee. Breathing, pelvic floor is strong. And then we'll look down, we'll find a bit of flat back, maybe that hinge, and inhale up, press and lunge. Nice. Do you feel the shoulders soften from the ears? That, you don't need activation there. That's tension. All right, so take your focal point forward, maybe hands to hips as we shift, pause, lift that back leg, and then hinge. Find the edge of your hinge. Try not to let your chest drop more than the leg lifts. Breathe, breathe, breathe. 
and slowly hinge it to standing, but bring that right knee forward and up. Maybe hands to hips, flex foot, and take the knee out to the side and back forward a few times. Just getting some nice movement here, some nice lubrication. And then we'll take a moment to find the placement for that right foot on our left leg. All right, press the foot into the leg, allow that knee to open to the side to a nice edge. Maybe hands to heart. Here on carpet, your ankle's really working here, your foot is working. Breathing. You're seeing but not seeing your surroundings. You're focused into your dress to your center. Take your time as you begin to lift that leg off, maybe hands to heart. Find the edge of the warrior three. And then slowly reach it back, crescent lunge. Inhale it up. Exhale, reach, take it down, vinyasa. Nice exhale, let it go. Let's do some turbo dog. Let's bend our knees as deeply as we can. Press through all those finger pads and breathe. Got to really press to the fingers so the hands don't slide, the arms are hugging. So keeping the chest in as deeply as you can. Inhale, straighten the legs. Exhale, maybe out your mouth. All right, looking towards our hands. Walk, step, or float. Feet between hands. Inhale, look forward and find space. And exhale, fold. Inhale, reverse it on up. Back then, maybe lift from the heart though, and exhale, fold. Inhale, look forward and find space. And exhale, fold. Maybe say next, exhale all the way down through vinyasa. Yes. So, a true sun salutation, you step it back through that same exhale. Inhale, right leg to sky. Exhale, knee towards our left underarm, spin the back heel down sideways, extend the leg, maybe to the floor, maybe lift your left arm up. And then bring your right leg down and take the left leg out. Yeah, right arm up. Let's do each side again. Just switch it, right hand down, inside of that left foot, right leg out. Left hand down, right arm up, left leg out. Just because. Back to down dog. Inhale, right leg to sky. Exhale, knee to nose. Set your foot inside your hand, flat back, lower your back knee, flatten your back foot. Inhale, your arms up. Interlace, point your fingers up. Inhale, lift from the heart. Exhale, slowly round it down, tuck your chin. We're gonna spend three breaths here. On your next inhale, press your both feet. We'll round it up. Exhale, maybe into a bit of back bend. Inhale, lift it up. Nice. So, arms up. Let's curl our back toes under and lift the back leg. Nice. All right, so from here, we're going to transition to dancers. So, bring your left hand to your... Um, your right hand to your hip and left arm cuts. Okay, you've got to really reach to the left hand. And we're going to shift forward and lift our back knee. Flex the foot. And then now point that left knee down as you reach for the big toe side of the foot here. But don't rotate your wrist. The thumb should be higher and your wrist should not be twisted. Hug the legs together. Let's take our right arm up now. All right, reach and hug those legs. As you begin to hinge at your right hip, once you find the edge of your hinge, press the foot into the hand. Heart is getting me. My weaker leg. Yes. And then maybe that leg can lift a little higher. Nice. Your palm can face the floor to help you reach more. Or if you have good balance here, good surface, maybe hand to heart. Yes. If you're in a good place, you might even bring the right hand down for half bow. 
Yes. But you gotta bring it back up to the dancer. And we're gonna take it back to Crescent Lunge. Maybe through a bit of Warrior Three and coming up. Exhale, take it down. Going through Vinyasa, leaning in, down, up. Nice exhale, let it go. All right, so we're going to do that following triangle side to side, two times each side again. So let's inhale, left leg to sky. Exhale, knee towards your right underarm as you spin the back foot down sideways. Maybe lift that right arm up. Reach through that lifted or extended leg. Hand down, both feet down. Then shift to that left foot. Right leg goes wide. Yes, yeah, so you're kind of in a plank here as you switch side to side. Nice. And so we'll go back to down dog. Inhale, left leg to sky. Exhale, knee to nose. Set the foot inside the hand. Flat back. Lower the back knee. Flatten the foot. Inhale, the arms up. Interlace. Point your fingers up. Inhale, lift from the heart again. And exhale as we tuck the chin. Round it down. Three breaths. Belly through the spine. Pull your back to the sky. On your next inhale, you'll come up and exhale into a back bend. Inhale up, release the hands, reach, curl the back toes under, lift the leg. All right, left hand to hip first, right arm hug just to help transition, lifting that right knee. And then the knee points down, release the hand down, palm faces out, palm is highest, hug the legs together. Reach the left arm up. Curl your big toe back onto the fingers. And then hinge. Find your edge, maybe press the foot into the hand. The foot might lift higher the leg. You might play with your arm a bit, your placement. Or just really activate and reach with that left hand, that helps. Maybe you wanna seek your half bow, bringing the left hand down. But remember, you gotta bring it back up. And then we'll reach it back to crescent lunge, maybe through just a bit of warrior three. Just controlling the transition, inhaling arms up. Exhale, reach as we take it down. Going through your vinyasa. Nice job. All right. To the bottom of your next exhale, walk, step, or float your feet outside your hands. Inhale, look forward, find space. And exhale, fold. So we just have a wider stance here. You might massage and the knee side to side. You're even welcome to take your feet off the mat and go really wide here. Yes. Get a little sundas and the lunges going if that would feel good. Just moving the legs around a bit more. If you're doing your lunges side to side, you might keep flat back. But if you're just wanting to stay in that nice forward fold for the release, you can do that too. Noticing where your body really needs that extra little sweetness. Or maybe it's too much of a tweak and you need to go to that, that flat back. All right, so we're gonna pause, center, walk, step, or float our feet back onto the mat. Inhale, look forward and find space. And exhale, fold. Inhale, let's lift it up. Reach, lift our heels. Feel the inner legs squeezing, and you're reaching. And on our exhale, we'll slowly lower down to the heels and into chair. Inhale again and exhale, fold, forward, fold. Inhale, look forward and find space. And exhale, fold as we step or float. Going through vinyasa. Nice. 
Nice exhale, let it go. Inhale, right leg to sky, and exhale, bend that knee in the air, reach the toes to the left shoulder, press to the right hand. Find some space here, stretch, a twist. If you can touch a piece of furniture or the wall, go ahead. Experience that. Do you feel a deeper stretch? Because it's supported and you can press into it a little more. Inhale, lengthen the leg. Exhale, slowly knee to nose. Set the foot inside your hand. Flat back. We're going to shift the back foot a little forward and to the left for warrior one. Toes mostly forward. Maybe a playful hinge. And inhale up. Warrior one. Spiral that left thigh forward. Maybe bend the front knee a little more. Feel the lift and the expansion of the heart as you breathe. Feel the shoulder blades kind of melting down the back. We're hugging in, actually. If you want to just feel that space where they're hugging in to help lift. All right, so on an exhale, we're going to take our hands behind interlacing. If you need to get a towel, take a moment. Inhale, lift from the heart, hug those upper arms, and exhale, lead with the heart. Feel that back foot working as you wave it through the throat and tuck your chin. Belly through the spine. Maybe track the front knee a little to the right. You might get that right shoulder in a little deeper. All right, two movements now with our breath. Inhale, slowly round it up. Lift from the heart. Exhale, wave it forward. Inhale, round it up. Exhale, wave it forward. All right, staying here, hands lifted. Lower your hands to your lower back. Let them drape to gravity, okay? Maybe give some nice movement to the wrist. You might press the hand down onto the floor. I don't think you can see my hand, so. Or any kind of movement like toothpaste. So from here, we might go straight to vinyasa or our Ekapada Kundasana one. Right middle finger behind that big, that right heel. Left hand as you would for plank. Lift the back heel, begin to slide that foot away. Now I'm beginning to bend my elbows and hug them. I'm going to drop my left rib cage into my left elbow as I reach the right foot out and shift forward. And then step it back. Going through vinyasa. Lean in, down dog. Nice exhale. So we're going to go to side plank next, but I want to do our left leg first. If you need to keep both feet down, do so. But maybe inhale, lift that right leg to sky, said left, yep. And slowly wave it to plank. And then roll to the outside edge of your left foot. Maybe you can open up to side plank, lifting that right leg arm up. Maybe reaching the right arm past your ear. Nice. And we'll release it back to that down dog, leg lifted, release it now. Inhale, left leg to sky. Exhale, bend the knee in the air, reach the toes towards the right shoulder, press with the left hand. Maybe draw circles with the toes, maybe a piece of furniture or wall is available here. Flirt with that. Inhale, lengthen the leg. Exhale, knee to nose. Set the foot inside your hand. Flat back. Shift the back foot just a little forward and to the right. Room for the hips. Flat back. Maybe playful hinge. And on an inhale, just feel the control transition. Exhale, soften. Press through the back heel. Spiral the thigh forward. Maybe bend the knee a little more for that sweet stretch. All right, next exhale, hands behind, interlacing. Inhale, lift from the heart. Exhale, slow wave, unfurling. As we tuck the chin at the end, belly to the spine. And we're breathing. Track that knee maybe a little more to the left if the joints allow. And balance. Our next inhale, will slowly round it up. Lifting the gaze, lifting the heart. Two times, exhale, wave it forward. Finish it, belly to the spine. Inhale, slowly round it up. 
exhale, wave it. All right, staying here, hands to lower back, release, let them go. Take a moment, maybe give some nice movement for the wrist. Feel light though, feel control to the core so your hands can actually lift and you can be free. So once again, you might go straight to vinyasa or take a break or left middle finger behind the heel, right hand plank, lift the back foot, slide it away, in the hug, drop the right rib cage into the right, elbow, shift forward, look to the left. And then reach it back to plank. Maybe going through vinyasa. Ah. All right. Nice exhale, let it go. So you might keep both feet down to wave it to plank, and you can always modify lowering the right knee. Or inhale, left leg to sky. Slowly shift into plank as you roll to the right side of your right foot outside. Put that left arm up, toes are open. Maybe reach that left arm past your ear. Take it down, down dog. All right, let's come down, hands and knees, find child's pose. But let's make it a dynamic child's pose if you're up to it. You can always just stay soft. Maybe come up on the spider fingers. And try to lengthen your hips further away, hip creases away from the shoulders. And breathe, belly strong. Very active here. And then we'll lower our elbows, bring our hands behind our neck. Um, palms are together flat. Sweep those elbows a little further forward. Maybe feel a nice stretch in the triceps into the underarms. Still continuing to breathe. All right, the hands will come forward. Inhale, slowly round it up. I was really feeling a stretch on my triceps there. It felt good. Didn't want to get up. Curl the toes under. Exhale, down dog. Control it. Two breaths here. Let's take our feet wider than our mat, actually. That always feels kind of good. Have a nice inhale, press to the fingers, exhale, maybe let the chest come in a little more, but through those arms coming in, the triceps kind of rolling out to the side and towards the back wall, trying to hug towards the midline themselves, rolling outside. It's an external rotation. All right, so walk, step, or float your feet back onto the mat. And on your next exhale, walk, step, or float your feet forward, big toes will be touching once we get there. Inhale, look forward and find space. And exhale, fold. Inhale, reverse it on up, lift from the heart. Reach, shift into the heels as we exhale in the chair. Breathing, shift the hips back, make sure the knees aren't drifting over the toes if you can. And feel that expansion and lift from the heart. Try to feel those shoulder blades drawing down and hugging to help lift the heart. Hands to heart. Inhale and exhale. Left arm outside that right leg. Look and see if that left knee is drifting forward. Pull the left hip crease back to lower the hips maybe. Press away from the leg and maybe you can open your heart a little more to the side. Feel that telescoping of the spine. From the crown of the head through the tailbone. Breathing. Some of you have a side crow practice. Feel free to go straight there. Or as always, maybe spider fingers to the floor, lift the heels, begin to hug the legs, press your shoulders back. Maybe hands to heart. Maybe find the revolve. Maybe flirt with your side crow. Hands come off at like a 45 degree angle. Your left arm stays connected to the left knee the whole time. Your right arm might come a little wider. You might not use the elbow, you might. As you shift forward, you're looking to the left. It's that shifting forward that helps the hips lift. And the worst thing that would happen is that you would come down to maybe the side of the temple there. And that would be another pose, falling into 
So when you're ready, baby fingers to the floor and find that forward fold. Oh, yes. In and out with the breath. Okay. Let's inhale, look forward to find space. And exhale, fold. Hands to the floor, looking forward, step or float, going to vinyasa. I didn't forget the other side. All right, inhale, right leg to sky. Exhale, bend that knee in the air. All right, challenge on, have control. Please let that dog reach for your right hand. How slowly. Nice, once you get there, press to those heels, squeeze the glutes, squeeze the thigh. Breathe. We're gonna reach, inhale our leg up, and exhale, counter pose. That leg is going to the left, maybe spin to the inside of that left foot. Nice. Holding, hand down, inhale your leg up. Exhale, knee to nose. Set your foot inside your hand. Spin your back heel down sideways, heel to heel, feel the arch alignment. I'm gonna switch here for a moment. Reach your left arm forward. We're gonna really challenge ourselves today. Really reach, press to the back foot. Maybe play with a playful hinge here. Now, if you really want the added challenge, watch your left middle finger. Try not to move the legs as you inhale up, warrior two. And then draw your gaze towards your right middle finger, okay? Let's spur up to the camera here. All right, let's track that front knee towards the pinky toe. All right, so today let's really feel it. Let's bring our hands to our left hip, all right? I want you to press that hip down and as you press it, begin to roll to the outside edge of your left foot and really begin to feel that left hip open up. But the front knee is still tracking to the right. So try to maintain that and keep that. Feel that extra activation that begins up here. All right. Draw the shoulders from the ears. Close those hip points like a book. And now maybe lower the hips. Really feel how that left leg is working. Breathing, breathing. Feel the lift of the heart, those shoulder blades going down. Yeah. Right hand to sky, exhale back, peaceful warrior. Lift from the heart. As always, you can bend one elbow or both. Feels good. And the shoulder stretch here. A left warrior two. All right, we're going to extend into extended side angle. Maybe your forearm comes to your thigh. Maybe you're one that can reach the floor. If you're really deep and you touch the floor, you probably want to touch outside the foot instead of inside. That will help you draw your shoulders back so you'll be more like between a plate of glass. All right, shoulders in alignment with the hips. But press away from whatever you're touching. I'm using my arm against that inner leg there, a little deeper today. Yes. All right, we're gonna inhale up, warrior two, straighten both legs, maybe shorten the distance a bit as we go into peaceful triangle. One arm behind the back here, it's really on the upper hip. All right, and if you get here, maybe lift your heart and square it a little more forward, deeper back then. Those legs are working here. All right, and we'll just open it up. So from here, we're going to shift into eagle pose. Okay, so I'm going to square up forward to you guys. We're in triangle pose. So we're going to bend our front knee. We're going to bring our hands to our hips, shift forward, and lift our left knee. All right, our foot is flat. Now bend your right knee a couple of times. Oops, this carpet is getting me today. And then keep that right knee bent as you lift that left leg on top. Squeeze those legs. Then we'll bend our right arm, bring our left arm underneath and around. If you need to remember, you can always open up and hug the shoulders. Draw the elbows down into the chest and press them in. Yes, fire up your back and breathe. 
Maybe deep in the hips a little, a little off here. Right? Breathe, feel that nice compression, guys, okay? If it's available, we're gonna to begin to hinge forward, reach your arms further forward, and reach that leg back for warrior three, eagle. Nice. When you reach those arms further forward, you might need to let them go and fly, that's okay. And we'll begin to slowly bend our right knee, maybe bring that left knee wide to find the eagle again. Woo! I'm on my mat, on the carpet, on the towel. Yeah, I'm wiggling. All right, we'll fly it out. And release it down. Woo, shake it off. Mountain pose. Okay, guys. Mountain pose. All right, setting it up again for our chair. Big toes touching. Come forward a bit. I can't find my happy spot. Inhale, arms up. And exhale into chair. Breathing, shift the hips back. Hands to heart. And inhale and exhale, right arm outside the left leg. Round it down, pull that right hip crease back, press away from the leg, telescope the spine. So you really feel everything drawing the midline here, girdling the spine. That's what we're doing. Maybe lower those hips some more. So once again, maybe straight into that side crow or just working with spider fingers, lowering the hips, squeezing the legs, press the shoulders back, maybe hands to heart. Maybe right arm outside. Maybe into your side front. Well, Angel, here I come. Nice. <laughs> it's kind of nice to just hold it here if you can. Hands to heart, really good for our feet our ankles. As always, if your joints don't like it, though, more apologies to mom. And fingertips to the floor. And we'll exhale, fold, forward, fold. Inhale, look forward and find space. And exhale, fold. Hands to the floor, looking forward, step or push. Going through vinyasa. Nice control I'm seeing there. Now left leg to sky, exhale, bend that knee, pause. How slowly can you slip? Take your time, maybe hover there a little. Have some hang time. Squeeze the glutes and breathe into this wonderful back bend. All right, we'll look back, we'll reach, we'll inhale our left leg to sky. And exhale, spin that right foot sideways as we extend that leg out to the left. And breathe. And down as we inhale our left leg up. Exhale, knee to nose. Set the foot beside the hand. Bend the back heel down sideways. Reach your right arm forward and pause. Feel your right hip already reaching back to that right foot. Maybe watch your right middle finger. If that throws off the balance, don't do it. Inhale up. Warrior two. Yes. All right. Once again, let's track that front knee to the left. And now let's place our hands on the hip. And as we press, kind of roll the flesh down, feel that line of energy roll to the outside edge of the foot. Yes, feel that nice opening of the right hip here. Zip it up, engage the hip points, maybe deep the lunge, and we'll breathe a bit here. Feel the presence of your right shoulder pressing back when you're reaching fingertip to fingertip here, hand to hand. I don't want to feel like it's drifting forward or too far back. Left hand to sky, exhale back to the warrior. Once again, maybe bend one elbow, both or none. Maybe deepen the lunge a little.
Hello, hello, warrior two. Exhale, hinge. Using that back leg, left forearm to the thigh, pressing. And the arm inside the leg, really pressing, firing all this up across the chest. Or once again, if you find the floor, maybe outside the hand. So you feel that alignment of the shoulders with the hips and the shoulders aren't dropping forward. Recognize if you've lifted your hips too much here, maybe bend that front knee a little. Yeah, feel the burn, baby burn. Beautiful. All right, inhale up, warrior two, straighten both legs, make a short the distance. And we'll exhale back, peaceful warrior with triangle legs. That arm against the upper hips, you might begin to square the chest a little more forward. If that's too much of a back bend, three legs sideways. All right, and then pull up for your two arms and hands to hips. All right, and we're going to begin to shift forward onto that right knee. And I left knee and lift our right knee forward. Flex the foot, bend your left knee a couple of times. Feel your upper body engaged. Keep the left knee bent as you bring the right leg on top of the left. Nice deep chair here as you can. Bending left arm, right arm underneath and around. Elbows down and into the chest, maybe a deeper chair again. Notice how you have a focal point here and you're just breathing, feeling everything squeeze into center to midline. Straight up and down. You can always choose to stay here or begin to hinge forward as you lift that right leg off, fly it back. Maybe reach the arms a little further forward and really peel it open. You can always fly the arms forward or to the side or back. And then as you press to that grounded foot, begin to bend the left knee, bring your right knee a little wider. And then find that eagle again. So the burn in that left ankle. And then we'll fly it out. Expand and down. Woo! Shake it out. All right. One more vinyasa here, and we're going to find our velocity squat. So let's inhale on up. And salutation A, exhale, hold. Inhale, look forward and find space. And exhale, fold as you step or float. Going through vinyasa, or just meet and now walk. I've had my heater on real early today. So I've had a feeling it today. It's a good thing. I've missed it. All right, so this week it's the right leg. So let's inhale our right leg to the sky. And as super slowly as you can, bring that right foot outside the hand. Maybe play with it a bit, tap it. Then maybe eventually lead with the heel when you set it down. All right, flat back. As always, a little quicker. Left leg comes forward and out into our Malatsana squat. Take time, really. Acclimate and adjust here. All right. I don't really want to just sit on a blanket, but I want it for support. All right. What does it feel like today? Do you want a telescope? Do you want to relax a little bit more like a turtle? Would that feel good? And just helping you find space in the hips, but taking tension out of the upper back and neck. So telescoping really doesn't alleviate tension. It creates tension. For you. It's a dynamic way to do it. The arms are pushing out, but yet the legs are hugging. It's very dynamic, helping you spine telescope. So if that's too much, soften. As always, you can bring that left arm wide, hand flat, reach your right arm up. You might spend one or two breaths there or move with your breath. I always feel this twist. Always feel it. So maybe that's why I don't. I don't really do it too much. So, but that tells me I probably should do it. Instead, I usually stay here because I'm just pretty comfortable. So recognize those places in your practice, like me, I'm recognizing right there, I'm a little stagnant, I'm in a rut, a little bit of samskara or Sanskrit, getting in those ruts and feeling too comfortable. You know, a lot of us have been taken out of our comfort zone lately, though. So. You want to stay in your comfort zone in yoga? I'm with you. I get it. 
All right, so curl or crane pose. All right, remember, if you're just playing with those heels, bring your hands far forward, and then lift the hips, bring your toes closer together. Heels stay lifted, knees stay bent, hands stay flat. Shift forward, bend the elbows, hug them a bit, set the knees on the back of the arms, pause. Truly, what does it take to press and lift back to where you started? Knees bent, knees lift. Have fun with it. Feel that control in that slow, fluid movement. Even though I do pro, I do love to do this. But there's a lot of strength here. I'm building to the floor. Maybe play with shifting forward, lifting one foot, then the other. Nice. Now after this, we're going to, if you're playing, do a few more. Get really in the zone to practice here. But we're going to come to our puppy pose for four inversions. So hips over knees. Slide our arms forward, coming to either to the forehead, the nose, or the chin. Or maybe you need a prop up under the forehead. Breathing. Remember, arms can go a little wider to alleviate tension in the shoulders. Maybe just squeak the hips a smidge and forward. Let the arms slide a little more forward. You might find the chest sink a little deeper. But this is very deep into the thoracic mid-back region of the back. And let's say that some of us are more open and not so open there. So if it's too much, back off. Very much a back bend here. You better be breathing to maintain that heart rate and blood pressure control. And we'll slowly walk it on up. Maybe get a little sip of water. I'm gonna to go to the screen and I can look at each one of you bigger and kind of come into your room with you and see where you go today, okay? If you don't want me there, just close me off. I'm <laughs> just kidding. Okay. Let's see, everyone's just getting focused right away. Nice control right in there. There you go, Amelia. Keep those legs long. Really lift. Keep the first leg long. Use the back of that leg. Feel your whole core working through that leg. Try to keep that leg long. You're fighting for it. Um, are you on the tippy top of your head, Amelia? I can't see your neck too much. No, I don't think so. So sit up for me. Sit up for me, Amelia, and touch the very top of your head. That's what needs to be on the floor. You are at, at an angle and your hair is kind of in the way, so I'm not 100% certain here. Okay, I just don't want your neck bent at all. Okay, yes, and that your hands go on the very back of your head. Yes, there you go. Nice side knee. Keep both legs long, Amelia. Use both legs. Keep them long. Yes, hold the front of her ankle on the lifted leg when she's lifting up, and that will give her something to press against. Now squeeze your legs together. Squeeze your legs together, really squeeze them. Don't arch your back, tuck your tailbone a little. Yes, hey puppy. Okay. I lost Amy. She's against the wall, kicking up. There you go. I'm sure she's doing her dolphin pose too. <laughs> I'm sure. Yes. So Amelia, look here for a second, okay? I'm going to make myself big and then look at you. Okay, Amelia. So when you get up here, make sure your first leg is staying really active, almost like you could pulse it, feel that strength. And that's also going to help you lift, and then your second leg is working too, okay? As soon as you start bending them, they're not as quite as active. And they become, everything just kind of starts wiggling around a little more, okay? So keep that in mind, all right? Woo! So I think, let's see, we're 
everybody is. Find a nice transition wherever you are. Mm -hmm. Nice transition. I can see everyone. Didn't know. I've made it. Yay! Okay. Hi, honey. I didn't know you made it. So glad to see you. Okay. So when you're ready, we're going to work our way to down dog. Pedal it out. Recognize if you need a vinyasa just to help you get back in the groove, tune back in. That's all good stuff. We will be working towards pigeon. So make sure your prop is nearby. Okay. So let's inhale our right leg to sky. Exhale, knee to nose, tuck the chin. Inhale it up. Exhale, knee to nose again. Bring that knee wider than your wrist and then set it down. Slide that back leg up multiple times. Nice, flex the front foot. Maybe take a moment to wedge in your prop. You can also look back to the left, make sure the heel is straight back from the hip, and that's also gonna help you square the hips a little more. If you can, come up on spider fingers, or maybe you're deep enough where you can just shift there. So I me and I nay, I know you're really deep in your pigeon, and I used to be able to do this. Instead of Spider fingers with the waterfalls. You might be able to inhale up, exhale, reach, inhale up. But just listen to your back and your hips, okay? The rest of us, spider fingers a little wider. Inhale, exhale, wave it forward, arms reach forward if they're free. Inhale, round it up, arms come wide and you lift yourself up. Yes, so just have at least three. And then maybe by your exhale, you'll just feel sweet on that third one where you can sigh it out. Maybe exhale out your mouth and just go, ha. So remember, if our chest is not touching the floor, please take a moment, sit up, find something that you can, you know, um, a blanket or something that you can wedge up under your chest. And then just see if all of a sudden your back and your shoulders just kind of go, Ah, releasing a little more um, activation to help support. That's what they're doing when they soften. They're releasing that activation that helps hold it up. Give yourself a few breaths. So twisting is good here. Thread the needle or revolve. Or maybe draping that right arm back onto the right leg. And just letting that right shoulder and that right arm melt. The arm or wrist goes to the prop or the floor, not the back. Just feeling that little bit of compression that arm brings, it might be too much. You can always back off. So recognize where you're feeling a little tightness or a deep stretch here. And use your inner eye and your breath. Just go to that area and let the exhales just kind of send a wave of melt, a soothing touch to that area, melting away a layer or two of tension or, or tightness. Those of you who are deep, if your arms are free, bring them long, spider fingers. Very active and dynamic here. Kind of fun to try, elbows off the floor. And then we'll release the elbows down, slowly walk it on up, lift from the heart, pause. Maybe bend the back knee, flex the foot. You can stay here, great stretch for that left quad. Maybe reach that left arm forward and up. Big toe side of the foot, finding your edge here. Remember those toes are curling back as the hand or arm pulls it forward. Once you find your edge, try to lift from the heart and square your chest a little more forward. Front toes are open, press away from the earth. 
If you didn't need a prop for pigeon, you might need it here so you don't round down as much into your right side body. Yes, yeah, so you don't roll over to that right hip as much. And breathe. When you're ready, just unwind. Curl the back toes under, lift the leg. Work out that right leg. Work it out. Move the prop to the other side, optional vinyasa. Nice exhale, let it go. Inhale, left leg to sky. Exhale, knee to nose. You know where we're going, so if you're not right here, it's okay. Inhale, lengthen. Exhale, knee to nose. Bring that knee in behind the left wrist wider. Taking time to acclimate, slide the right leg back, keep sliding it. Take time to wedge in the crop. Pause, feel centered for a moment. Once again, maybe fly those arms in your waterfalls. Front toes stay open, okay? Or hands wider than the mat, inhale. Exhale, tuck the chin, round it up, lift the gaze. Remembering always to get that movement all the way through the throat, the neck. Feeling that line of energy from the back foot to the crown of head. When you're ready, maybe sigh it out or exhale it out through the mouth. Take stock, take a few breaths. Maybe once again, slide something up under the chest. Even if you're just two inches off the floor and you can't get and like in class, you wouldn't get a, bl a block there, but you have um, maybe a blanket. Just feel the difference there, the releasing a little more tension in the back and the shoulder blades, the neck. It's a nice experience. Once again, maybe thread the needle, revolve, or drape that left arm back on the leg, or none of that. You might just keep the backs of the hands under the forehead or one fist to support the neck. Take your breath and inner awareness to the parts that are feeling the stretch the deepest. It shouldn't be a lot of tension. You might have gone too deep. So recognize that even just coming up to the elbows, you still feel the same stretch, but just not as intensely. That's probably where you should be, okay? All right, once again, maybe that dynamic arm position, long arms, spider fingers, really pressing away through the fingertips, and then belly through the spine, trying to draw the hips back and away. Breathing. And lowering the elbows, slowly walking it on up. But from the heart and the back knee, maybe that's where you stay today. Or maybe inhale, reach that right arm forward. Exhale, take it up and back. Big toe side. Big toe curls back on the fingers. Maybe left hand stays to the side. Or you float the left arm up, mind your mind. Maybe lift the heart a little more forward. Yes, try to lift out of that left rib cage on the side there. Yes, try to find balance through the rib cage it is so easy to rely on the points of contact with the other parts of the body and not open up more to the rib cage. And when you're ready, just slowly unwind. Work your way back and out of it. Let the body just find some lubrication here. And then once again, maybe through vinyasa you go. Once you get here, we're going to go to our backs, okay? 
I may, um, if you don't have a block, get something that you can squeeze between your knees. I have this ball here. It's squishy, but yet it's firm, a little resistant. So you could even use a blanket or a towel, okay? Okay. All right, so we'll go on to our backs. Just take a moment, walk it out side to side, get a transition. Look opposite the knees. And we're going to have a little bit of fun with our bridge here with our item that we're squeezing between our knees, okay? So once you get it between your knees, set your feet down. You might need to keep your feet just the distance of your knees just to hold the object. But if you, if you do need your feet wider, do so. So our feet technically will probably be a little closer than normal today. All right, you can still walk the heels towards your fingertips, walk the arms a little closer in. So we're gonna be looking for these hip lifts where we go up and down, but we're not gonna to touch our hips to the floor. We're just gonna find a hover spot and just keep going up and down and squeezing whatever it is we have between our knees and our glutes the whole time. So draw the shoulders from the ears, okay? The chest from the chin and inhale, lift up. Lift your heels slowly, round it just a little and then lift up. It doesn't have to be a huge movement, but feel the squeezing here. Find a fluid movement. Even my feet are working here almost like they're pedaling. Yes. So once again, we're trying not to let those hips go all the way to the floor. My toes and my feet are working just as much as anything else here. We got about 15 more seconds of this. Okay, one more and then we're down. Roll it down, draw those knees in, maybe rock it side to side again. Flex the feet, look opposite the knees. Oh yeah, just a little stability work there. That's nice and hopefully your feet felt a little bit of a workout there too. And just keep them strong, helping with balance, protecting our feet, keeping them strong. All right, so from here, if you want to find a traditional bridge supported or your wheel, feel free to. If you think you need a happy baby first, just to counterpose it out a little more, feel free to. But you're still welcome to try another bridge or wheel somewhere before or after this, okay? Let me see where you all go. Yes. Or maybe another bridge or wheel. It's not on the menu tonight, and that's okay too. It's not even on my menu at all. <laughs> so, but you can include it if you like, okay? Nice. Oh, feel that nice space in your body. When you are done, don't hurry, we will transition it out again and find a happy baby. Yes. Let's see where everyone's going. Okay. Want to be on the same page with everybody. And happy baby, make sure that tailbone lengthens away from you. Tuck your chin a little, draw the knees down and draw the knees wide. Feel the flexing of the feet and the energy between the hands and the feet pressing and pulling and breathe. Soften your gaze, find two or three breaths and just feel the pose. And then maybe choose to get playful in the pose. You know, it is so fun. There's so many options in this pose. Moving stillness, stretching the legs, stretching the toes downwards. And Remember, sometimes we forget this is a restorative inversion. Our legs are higher than our heart, not our hips, but our legs are. So we're still draining the blood from our legs into our heart and our lungs, so it's good to for a nice filtering. 
try to remember to breathe just as consistently as you do when you're in your favorite parts and you're connecting breath with body and movement. If you haven't already, maybe get some leg stretching here. You might take the feet straight up or wide, fingers to the toes, taking it a little deeper into the backs of the legs. If you're not feeling that, find something that does interest you. Maybe you can go to a nice wide straddle and that feels good on the inner thighs or even frog legs and try to open those knees towards the floor. Yeah, you like that one. I know I mean, yeah, so there's, happy baby can take us into a lot of, and then you're pausing and you're feeling gravity kind of, not take too much hold, but have a little effect. Okay guys, I'm gonna give you all a juicy spinal twist today. Um, so make sure your blanket or a pillow is nearby if you're close to grabbing one. All right, nice. So we're going to, um, I don't have the bolster today, but we just wanna make sure we are supported. We'll have our feet wide, take our knees, windshield wipering side to side first. All right, be sure to look opposite the knees. All right, then we'll take our knees to the right. Left knee is straight down from the hip, so lift your head and look. Now I know my left knee's not on the floor, I'm already gonna place a blanket up under my left knee. And then lift my right heel onto that left thigh. Yes, my right foot kinda stays flexed a little here. Arms wide, maybe look to the left. And sometimes for some people, they even need a little blanket under the right leg, but if you're okay without having that there, that's fine too, if it's not touching. Looking to the left, just feeling what you're feeling now, observing, trying to close your eyes. Where do you feel the initial tension stretch? Soften into that. And with the weight of the foot on the thigh, maybe you begin to feel a little more stretch in that left hip, left sciatic area. I don't know, IT bend, you might feel it anywhere along your psoas connecting from the pelvis on the back and the hip and wrapping around that pelvis to the front of the leg. Stretching multiple things here. Maybe you feel it more in your right inner thigh. Just observing and noticing all the places you feel it and softening into them, allowing for some space. You're real deep here and you can reach your left hand for that left foot. Cat tail, that feels good too. That deepens through that quadricep. It might be a little too much. It goes straight through the hip when I touch it, feel it too. All right, we'll slowly unstack, feet on the floor, lift your hips, recenter them. Maybe you need a little movement side to side. Maybe press your prop a little to the right. Take the knees over to the left. Lift your head, like, make sure the right knee is straight down from the hip. You're gonna lift the left heel onto the right thigh. Maybe reach for cattail here, right hand towards that right foot. And look to the right if you can, and just kind of melt. Enjoy continuing to breathe, but notice how your breathing isn't quite as deep. It's kind of like when you're in tree or in this pose, you're not, your body's not using as much oxygen, but you could mindfully still do a deep and dry breath or any other kind of breathing. That's in your practice. Try to feel the shoulders soften away from the ears. When you're ready, slowly unwind yourself, feet on the floor, lift your hips, set them down. Once again, recognize what you might need. You might even like a plow pose. To me, that's a sweet counter pose, but some people it's too deep. So recognize what your body needs before you work your way to Shavasana. If you're near your couch, you might bring your hips to the couch and then just bend your knees and let your 
legs rest on the couch, kind of like legs up the wall. That might feel really good today and something playful that maybe you haven't done before. And that would be a good thing to do too. Trying to see. Okay, so people in plow pose, reach those legs long, release your, if your toes are on the floor, release your arms flat. And maybe tiptoe your toes side to side, getting another twist. Yes, don't take it too intense, Agne. Yeah, be careful. Make sure the chest is drawing away from the chin. Just, you go girl, Amy. <laughs> okay. Take your time. Try to draw your legs as close to your face as you can. Yes, when you roll it down. You'll need that fish pose, lift from the heart, some sort of back bend. Once again, if you're by a couch, Try it. See what it feels like to do legs up the wall and then bend your knees. If the seat of your couch is kind of low, just place a, an extra pillow up under your calves. Yes. There you go. Yeah, Amy, you can do legs up the wall. Oh, yeah, try your banister. See what that does for you. Might not feel too good <laughs> with the wood. Yeah, nice try. It's just good to try different things on. And then we go, yay or nay. Okay, good. All right, looks like we're all beginning to settle in to our Shavasana pose where we wanna be. Make sure to give yourself at least a few minutes if you're gonna leave, but give yourself the Shavasana. Remember, it's the most important pose. Just allowing that oxygenated blood to cleanse and detox. You've worked so hard for it. Thanks for coming if you're leaving. All right, so point those toes in, let them flop out. Get that fun jello jiggle wiggle. If there's a smile on your heart here, let it creep to your lips. Yes. Remember to resolve to be still and observe as you bring your awareness to your mouth first. Just be there. Feel the tongue soften from the roof of the mouth. And then, and then just feel that the lips part. Feel the softening, the melting. So wonderful to feel all the tension begin to melt from the face all the way through the bone. When you do resolve to leave the head, allow the head to melt. Notice the weight of it. And allow the neck to soften. Enjoy all you can see and observe here, just feeling that melt. And I'm going to just let you all wake up when you want, but I'm going to namaste you out here. Just finding quality moments at any moment in the day is possible. Just by focusing on your breathing and mindfully allowing tension to melt from your body. But you don't have to lay down to do it. Just remember that. Namaste.